Section 54 is actually quite light touch. It's not at all burdensome in my view and most businesses don't seem to think it is either. It's structured in a way that explains very clearly what is required, but it also suggests the headings under which companies can report. Now at the moment that's purely voluntary, they can say as little or as much as they want to, but we hope to strengthen that in the future. Of course I got involved in it when it was in the House of Lords, and because I've been involved in looking at the supply chains in the fashion industry, I was very keen to see how we could make this particular section work, because it is quite groundbreaking. I think what's really important is that government is very clear with business of its expectations. I think when you were talking about children being enslaved, when you were talking about 40 million people worldwide, upwards of 30,000 here in the UK, I don't think government can be too um, ambitious in setting those challenges for, for business. And what I mean by that is that we shouldn't be watering it down it should be absolutely clear that this is unacceptable in the 21st century. The century. The co-op is the world's oldest cooperative business and we're one of the biggest in, in, in the world. Uh, we're predominantly a food business, so for us, clear the products that we buy and then choose to sell. Um, we have to look at where there is slavery in those supply chains, and some of those supply chains are international, uh, and we'll be to go through many tiers. It is morally wrong for any business to do nothing about the risk of modern slavery in its supply chains. It cannot be an achievement for a business not to have slaves in its supply chains. Proper transparency is being able to engage and it be interrogated about what you're doing. It's not always easy for companies to uh, understand what's going on in their supply chains. Non-governmental organisations, NGOs, can provide a useful link and a, a better understanding of what's actually going on on the ground. In this way they can be really helpful for both business and for parliamentarians. The DACA principles for migration with dignity uh, are really useful f uh, framework for understanding the many challenges that migrant workers face around the world. Um, business can use them to identify where there might be particular points of challenge or risk for migrant workers uh, working in their factories or in their other operations and how those might be better addressed. I think initially some businesses were really scared that NGOs and trade unions and other parts of civil society were going to hammer them if they found out that there was something horrible going on in their supply chains. But in effect what's, what's happened is that this Section 54 has enabled groups of businesses, NGOs, uh, faith groups, investors forum and all kinds of other bodies to come together and think how can we work on this together in a collaborative way.